Last time on the Skip and Josh podcast. Some people listening do know that you are like a self-proclaimed germaphobe. What is it like for you living in this world now? All these new measures that everyone is talking about, you know, you have to wash your hands for 20 seconds, don't touch yeah. your face, don't shake hands, yeah. whatever. Like, I've been doing these things for 25 years. So yeah. all these things that are like sort of quote unquote new to people, it, it's uh, my daily life has not really changed at all. You're listening to the Skip and Josh podcast with Skip Sherman and Josh Obadia. I'm Josh in Toronto. And I'm Skip in Montreal. In today's episode, TV shows we're watching. Classic March Madness games. And 1980s baseball. But first, some actual NFL news. Okay, Skip. So one thing I noticed this week with everyone working from home, and by everyone, I mean the entire world working from home, when you watch like a regular sports cast and you see the host of the show speaking to other people, the people that he's speaking to are at home as well. In fact, the host is sometimes even at his own home or her own home. And so they have no choice but to use Skype or or some of the similar methods that we use to do this show. And so one of the things that frustrates me when we do our show is that our, our bandwidth, we have bandwidth issues sometimes. And so you'll say something and I won't hear it till like seven seconds later. I'm exaggerating, of course. But it's nice to see that even on ESPN, which has bucket loads of money, they have the same exact issues. <laughs> the same exact issues. It's so true. And I feel like, well, it's not that I just, I feel like, I know that, and the worry is that so much bandwidth is being used for all this technology that like the internet services in North America are are being stretched to their limit. Right? Like the bandwidth for everybody is being stretched right now. Um, so it's actually quite a miracle that I sort of can see you pretty clearly, actually, and, and hear you pretty well. So that's good. Yeah, there are some moments where you freeze on the screen and I don't hear what you're saying yeah. or your your speech yeah. is splur- slurred as if you're drunk or something, even though I know you haven't had a drink in a while. Um, <laughs> but uh, anyway, so so because TSN has no programming to show... Uh, For some reason, they're basically just showing you what ESPN has on all day long. Like sometimes, you know, we always get the same ESPN shows like Pardon the Interruption or, um, you know, The Jump sometimes we get on TSN. But now, every day, literally, from like the moment you wake up to the moment you go to sleep, all you get on one of the TSN channels is a full day of ESPN coverage wall to wall, which is which is good and bad. It's good because we're getting to see some stuff we don't usually see, but there's no Canadian content whatsoever, as if there's any content to talk about at all anyways. But I mean, what we're hearing about is what the NBA is doing, what the NFL is doing. There's actually no NHL coverage on the Canadian networks right now at all because of that. But uh, since I've been watching ESPN, this leads to yeah. this leads to what is bugging me. There are a lot of things that are bugging me this week, and there are a lot of people that um, uh. need a reality check in this world. So <laughs> I, I'm not even sure where to begin. So I'm just going to go in no particular order. You can't even, boy, are you bugging me, man? I'm gonna when I get, I'm gonna nail. Ooh, God. I'm, I'm getting bugged now. Whoa, man. I don't know if you were watching, uh, so there's a show on ESPN first thing in the morning. I think it's called Get Up with, uh, is it Mike Greenberg? Anyway, Greenberg. not important. Yeah. So so a couple of days ago or a few days ago, again, he had like on Skype or I don't know what he was using to talk to um, the two guys that he talks to every morning. I think one of them is Dan Orlovsky and the other one is Marcus Spears. I, I may be getting those names wrong. I'm not sure. Not important. Anyway, so... In the middle of Dan Orlovsky talking, he completely interrupts him and says, I'm sorry, Dan, we have to cut away. We have breaking news. I apologize. And of course, Dan doesn't hear him right away because there's that delay. So so it looked really bad. But they cut away to uh, Jeff Darlington, who I never heard of Jeff Darlington until that day. But apparently this guy has won, you know, awards for, you know, AP Sports Awards for breaking news. He's like, you know... Adam Schefter or or Bob McKenzie or Elliot Friedman, but he's, you know, the NFL guy. 
So he has this huge breaking news that he's going to tell us about. And what is the breaking news? The breaking news is that Tom Brady will not be on the Patriots next season. Which, you know, <laughs> it, at the time it was breaking news. However, stay with me for a second. All he was doing was reading a tweet that Tom Brady had just posted minutes earlier. In other words, right. that tweet was visible to the entire world. So to me, this is not insider information like as if, you know, Tom Brady texted you and only you and only you know. The whole world knew about this. So why is this such a big deal? And why are they saying Jeff Darlington is breaking this news? Jeff Darlington didn't break the news. Tom Brady broke the news. Jeff Darlington just read to us like we're eight-year-olds. I'll tell you why it's a big deal. And it's really not. You're right. But the um, it's because they have nothing to talk about. <laughs> they have nothing. They don't know what they're going to talk about. So the fact that Brady tweeted, that goes to the top of the chart right there. Right? So that gives them that gives them eight hours. Tom Brady gave all the sports nets of the world eight hours of content or more this week. Just because he, well, I mean, there was a cascade of reactions right he, he sent a tweet and then eventually he he did sign with tampa bay right so um yeah that that gave all these sportscasters something to talk about and us something to talk about too actually that's fine but the thing that bothered me was jeff darlington didn't break this news tom brady broke no, the news right. and and all week yeah. long they've been posting on the bottom on the crawl you know on the ticker jeff uh jeff darlington breaks news that tom brady is leaving the patriots Jeff Darlington didn't break the news. Mm -hmm. Tom Brady broke the news himself. Anybody could have read the tweet. Greenberg himself could have read it, right? Exactly. And so they had to cut away yeah. and go to this other guy to read to us. Again, as if we're eight years old or four years old. Yeah, you know there's a skit they do sometime on the late shows, like uh, celebrities read mean tweets. I'm sure you've seen this before, right? I think I might have seen it. Like they'll read me, they'll read mean tweets about themselves, right? And just to show how stupid the mean tweets are. But like, is that a new segment that the sports shows are going to do? Like, hosts read athletes' tweets now. Is that is that where we're going? Could be, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. I need to stay with ESPN so, but, for a minute, though. Unless, I yeah. mean, I don't really want to talk but before about we the get, whole. But before we get to uh, before we get to more things that are bugging you, do you want to talk about Brady, like, or or you don't really want to talk about it? <laughs> The National Football League. Well, I mean, I was just about to say I don't really want to talk about it, but we could talk about it. I mean, <laughs> uh, my opinion is, if you want my opinion, yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah, sure I do. I, I, I understand why Tom Brady would sign with Tampa Bay because he's getting $50 million. I get that. I don't know why Tampa Bay yeah. would want him. He is, I think, 43 years old. He did not have a good season yeah. last year. You know, this is like, you know, signing Wayne Gretzky on his last leg or, or signing Guy Lafleur when he's on his last legs. I mean, you know, what's he might have one decent season left in him. Maybe. Who knows? You know, I don't think Tampa Bay is a Super Bowl contender just because of this. They weren't a good team last year. I don't think they're any better this year, to be honest, with Tom Brady. That's my opinion. I agree. I think um, Brady is, I think Tampa Bay is not, is not better than they were. <laughs> like, I don't know, like, I know Jameis Winston threw for 30 interceptions last year, but he did throw for a bajillion yards and they had this really crazy passing attack. Um, I don't, I don't think Tampa Bay is actually better. I, I'm, I don't think they're better at all. I think they're the same. And New England finally is going to become relevant. I really feel like, like, I don't know who their quarterback's going to be, but like the rumors are like Cam Newton, maybe, or like the other name I've heard is Andy Dalton. <laughs> like if the Patriots sign Andy Dalton and he's their quarterback, do you really feel that the Patriots are like, like are, they weren't even that good last year. To be honest, they had a good record because the division wasn't strong, but down the stretch, they weren't good. And then in the playoffs, they just fizzled out because that's how they played basically the whole second half. So, like, I just think, I just think finally, like, the Patriots are going to go back to being the irrelevant team that they were for most of our lives before Brady arrived. So, yeah. And I know that Jameis Winston threw 30 interceptions last year, but at least Jameis Winston is still young and yeah. he still could improve. You know, with with the proper coaching, um, and and if he yeah. and if he and if he if he puts in the work, and he not just the you know not just the physical work, but the mental work, because as you've said on this show, 
a good quarterback, yeah. it's not how far you can throw the ball or how hard you can throw the ball or even how accurate you can throw the ball. It's decision making. And so clearly he didn't make good decisions half the time because he threw 30 interceptions. But again, at least he's still young and he can still improve. Tom Brady, he's on the decline. And in fact, he's more than on the decline. I think he's done. I, you know, yeah. he signed a two year well, deal. I don't know if he's going to be able to finish the full contract, to be honest. Well, it's, it's two years only. And it's, what's interesting is that it's all guaranteed, right? He's getting his $50 million regardless of what happens. So he doesn't good need luck. money. I wish them luck. I wish Tampa Bay luck. I wish New England luck. But I think both franchises are, I think both teams are not going anywhere this season, assuming there is a season. And by the way, you mentioned New England. If they get Cam Newton, that's an upgrade from Tom Brady. I know Cam Newton, you know, wasn't healthy. And I think he only played one or two games last year. And the year before that, yeah. when he did play, he didn't play that well. But again, Cam Newton is younger than Tom Brady. And if he's fully healed from his injuries, and I don't know if he is, but if he is, yeah. um, with the proper coaching, he could he could be, he was an MVP one year. I'm not saying he's going to be an MVP again, but he could be good again. So, yeah. so to me, that's an upgrade yeah. for New England if they get Cam Newton. Minor upgrade. But yeah, I mean, I think Cam Newton is good if he's healthy. And I don't know if he's ever going to be healthy. That's the thing with Cam Newton, right? Like, I don't, like, he can't, he, his shoulders sustain so much damage and his body that, like, he just, we never saw the, we never saw, we never ever saw the MVP Cam Newton other than that one year, right? Because he's just been too beat up. And I don't, th don't know if it's possible. But I do still think, yeah, they, uh, Cam Newton is exactly the type of player the Patriots would go get, right? Someone who everybody sort of countered out, someone who's like, no one's really considering and they're like they're gonna like make this little reclamation project out of him and turn him turn him around you know so all right i'm ready to hear what else is bugging you we we got off the topic into the nfl but no that's okay um because mm -hmm. this is also related to the nfl so yeah another person who needs to have his head examined and i think you'll agree with me yeah. even before i tell you what happened is stephen a smith well he's a character josh i mean I don't believe that Stephen A. Smith in real life is the Stephen A. Smith you see on TV. I just don't okay. believe it. I think he plays a character. Okay, yeah. that's fine. So let me just tell you um, what what happened, what he said this week. So they're talking about uh, Dak Prescott. And, you know, he's a yeah. free agent. Or actually, he's not a free agent, but his contract expired. But the Cowboys can franchise him if they want. And you can correct me if I'm wrong, and but they I believe... Did. They did. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about this before it happened because this was before they franchised uh -huh. him. Or maybe it was like right after they franchised him. So when you franchise a player, I believe that you take the top five players at that position, you average out their, their salary, and that's what you have to pay your guy if you want to franchise him. So this he's is, getting a boatload correct. of money. He's getting, he's going to be getting $30 million this year if they franchise him, which I believe they did. Um, $30 million is a lot of money for anybody, for anybody. Um, right. And I don't care, you know, if he's won six Super Bowls or zero Super Bowls, $30 million is a lot of money. And Stephen A. Smith sits there on television and with a straight face says that Dak Prescott should reject the contract and sit out. And I'm, I'm, I'm sitting there and listen, did you really just say that? You're telling him to turn down $30 million. You're saying that the Cowboys have insulted Dak Prescott by giving him a $30 million contract. This to me is <laughs> mind boggling. It's mind blowing. I, I wanted to punch my television screen when I heard this. Now you can say he wasn't insulted or he was insulted. I mean, we've seen this same scenario play out with Kirk Cousins, right? Like th the whole idea of them franchising him is that they don't want to give him a long term contract or they are not, they can't come to an agreement about what that long term contract is. But the fact that they haven't signed him and they're saying, okay, we're going to pay you for one year. I mean, yeah, you're right. There's no way he could sit out. Like, how, how do you sit out? How do you turn down $30 million? Y you may not make that money ever again in your life, you know? Like, so. Yeah, that's just absurd. Like, that's just absurd. And and those are the rules. If he wants to sit out, let him sit out. It'll be the dumbest thing he's ever done because there's no guarantee he's ever going to get that money again. Exactly. So 
Yeah. That was just another thing that bugged me. Um, yeah. Oh, well, that does that that with reason. And then staying with the NFL, this actually doesn't bug me. This was I, I was this was something I was happy to see. Um, hmm. You heard all these rumors, you know, before Tom Brady signed with Tampa Bay and before. Before free agency opened, there were all these rumors about this quarterback's going to go here, that quarterback's going to go there. And um, one yeah. rumor, which I thought was completely ridiculous, and I'm glad it didn't happen, the 49ers were considering signing Tom Brady and cutting Garoppolo. That would have made no sense to me at all. I'm, I'm glad for, if you're a 49ers fan, I'm glad that didn't happen. I don't know where that rumor came from. I don't know how it started. It was circulating. People believed it. And it seemed absolutely ridiculous. Like it does never made any sense in any planet, you know, <laughs> like it just doesn't, didn't make sense at all. Like I get it. He had a bad second half in the Super Bowl. So, okay. So of the entire season, he played one bad half of football. It happened to be in an important game that everyone was watching. That's not a reason to cut a guy. But, but the thing, the thing that I was actually pleased to see, um, the Tennessee Titans, they were apparently considering signing Tom Brady and then they ended up signing Ryan Tannehill now I get Ryan Tannehill until this past season did nothing in the NFL but he just had a very good year for you or or at least when he once he became the starter he had a very good season for your team Mm -hmm. they won was it one or two playoff games they won at least one um and now you're considering they won one they won one okay and now so you you sort of you found a winning formula with Tannehill and uh, and Derrick Henry, why would you want to right. break that up or change that? I, anyway, so luckily I yeah. think they came to their senses and they signed him. Uh, now maybe they gave him too much money or too many years, whatever. But you know, anytime you sign a player, you're usually overpaying him or giving him too many years anyway. But I'm glad to see that yeah. they kept him and didn't go get you know I don't know uh, Brady or or um, Philip Rivers. Philip or, Rivers. Or who knows who else. Yeah, yeah. Well, they did sign him. They did give him too much money. You know, he's making more than Brady, actually. Well, he should be getting you know. getting more than Brady because he's much younger than Brady and he has more years left in him. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> I guess, yeah. <laughs> like, like, like I, 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 if I'm paying a player, if I'm an owner and I'm paying a player, I'm not paying that player based on what he's done in the past, which obviously Tom mm-hmm. Brady's you know, resume is phenomenal. I'm paying him based on what I think he can do going forward. And I don't think Tom Brady can do much going forward. I think Ryan Tannehill, again, similar to, similar to Jameis Winston, these guys aren't exactly old. They still have time to learn new things and become better players. Yeah. But I mean, you just said you need to, you want to, you want to give them what they're going to do in the future, but you measure what they're going to do in the future by looking at what they've done in the last few years. You do look into the past to, to quantify what they could do in the future. It's just that, you know, Brady's 43 years old. He's been in the NFL for 20 years. I think it's time to like, just, just call it a day. You know, like, honestly, he should have just retired. Like he's, I think he's going to look back Brady. We're getting back to Brady now, but like, I think he's going to look back and regret that he's, he's not going to regret getting the money. But he's he's going to look back and say, you know what? I should have just went out as a Patriot, you know? Well, remember, and I'm switching sports here. Remember, Martin Brodeur was on the New Jersey Devils forever. And then he signed with the St. Louis Blues. And I think he played like five or six games with the Blues. And he was mm-hmm. terrible. And he, I don't know if he quit or they cut him or I don't know what happened. But it was just, yeah. it was it's a blemish on his nice career resume. Yeah. There's very few examples of stars that have played for one team for almost their whole life that go somewhere else and then flourish, you know, it doesn't happen that often. I mean, Peyton Manning did it with Denver. He, his first year and a half, two years with Denver, he set all kinds of records and then he had no arm left and they did win the Super Bowl despite him because he couldn't throw. They still won because of their defense. And then the only one that I could remember is Joe Montana. When he went to Kansas city, he was good on Kansas city for a couple of years, but, um, but that's Kansas Joe Montana city never won Manning, the Super Bowl. You know? No, 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 of course not. No, no, definitely not. Definitely not. And Anyways, so, good and luck so to by Tom the Brady. way, by the way, <laughs> so how, how is Tampa Bay going to um, measure whether this signing was successful or not? I think if they don't win a Super Bowl in the next two years, to them, this signing is a failure, if I'm not mistaken. Correct me if well, I'm wrong, because why else are they know. signing him? I mean, 
I mean, you could say that your goal is to win the Super Bowl, but I think for them, if they would make the playoffs, it would be a successful season. I, I would say, I would think. No, so, get into the playoffs, so, right? So that, so that, that makes me scratch my head even more because, from what I understand, other than Brady, Tampa Bay has you know some nice young players that are up and coming. If I'm not mistaken, you know, receivers, this and that, mm-hmm. and so if based on that if you think your team is going to be ready to win the Super Bowl maybe in two or three years from now, would you not want a younger quarterback to grow with this team? Because in two or three years from now, or four years from now, when those other guys are in their prime, Tom Brady's going to be retired, and then you need a quarterback again. Tom Brady should have been retired now. Forget about in their prime. <laughs> like he's like, he's just... Anyways, we could just go on and on. What's next? What's next? What okay. else you got? I'm done with football. We got off on an NFL tangent there. Yeah. That's okay. Well, that's the only news there was this week. Well, there was other big football news. I mean, Todd Gurley got cut. <laughs> and and then and he signed with Atlanta. And good luck to them. Good luck to Atlanta. But I think Todd Gurley's done. I mean, there's no... Unless they use him in the same way that the Rams used him, which is like by babying him in terms of the number of carries and and just splitting, you know, if they think he's going to carry the ball 30 times a game and rush for 1,500 yards like he did a few years ago for the Rams, I think the Falcons are, you know, have made a grave misjudgment, you know. And then the other big signing this week, trade actually, um, I feel really bad for Houston Texans fans. I feel really bad for them. <laughs> like, I just feel really bad for them because they're – Coach GM really screwed them. Like, I don't know how they evaluate talent there in Houston. I don't know what happened, but like this is this is what happened. This is if you're a Texans fan. You read, you read, you read about a trade, you're like, oh my God, we just got David Johnson. That's pretty good. We we finally we might have we're gonna throw him into our running back mix. Maybe he's gonna do something for us. What did we give up for him? Probably a third round pick, couple a third fourth round pick, maybe a second at the most. And then you read further and you're like, we gave up DeAndre Hopkins? What the hell? Like, like, what in the holy hell? Like, there's no way that trade should be even allowed to happen. <laughs> like, it just doesn't make sense in any universe at all. So, really, I feel bad for Houston Texans fans right there. So, Bill O'Brien now has we now... Can, we can go off the NFL. No, well, I, I have a couple things since you, since you mentioned that. Bill O'Brien yeah. has now demonstrated that he makes bad decisions as a general manager and bad decisions as a head coach, as we noticed in the playoffs. So you have several reasons to to dismiss this person from your staff, if you'd like. Um, You didn't mention, by the way, that um, Stephon Diggs was traded from Minnesota to Buffalo. That's the next highest profile thing, but, you know, we, we don't want to get into every single move, you know, so. Staying with people that bug me for 200, Alex... This is you. So nothing's going on in baseball, but here's, this is, I file this under, this guy needs to get a clue. Um, you've heard of Tommy Pham. He's a major league baseball player. He's been in the majors, I don't know, six, seven, eight years. I don't know exactly. He's an okay yeah. player. You know, he's not an all-star. He may have been an all-star one season. I'm not sure. Um, he had one decent year. And yeah. he's been on already three or four different teams in his career. So... Um, I'm going to read you a quote from Tommy Pham. Um, First of all, before I read you the quote, there's a lot of people in the world, not just in sports, but there's a lot of people in the world right now that have a lot of questions. You know, this is very unknown to everybody because, you know, some people don't know if they're going to lose their jobs. Some people don't know if they're going to get paid because they only get paid by the hour. and, and, And there's a lot of people that have a lot of questions and there are not a lot of answers out there. In fact, there are very few because no one knows what's going to happen. So Tommy Pham right. the other the anxiety day. Anxiety level, the anxiety level among people in the population general is high. People, people are worried, right? Right. Yeah. That's yeah. Go ahead. So this is what Tommy Pham said. He said, I don't know if any of us will get paid, but you look around, I got friends in the NHL, they're getting paid. The guys in the NBA are getting paid. How is it going to look if we're the only major sport? and the richest sport bringing in the most revenue, and we're the only ones not getting paid. Close quote. So, first thing, he said that baseball is the richest sport bringing in the most revenue. I think it's the football. I think it's NFL. I don't think it's baseball. So, already one error in Tommy Pham's quote. 
The second thing well, is... Well, maybe if you consider that they have 162 games and, like, the overall attendance in baseball is the highest. The total, total, total attendance. Because there's the most games, right? But Right, yeah. but you can get into a baseball game for $10. You can't get into a football game for $10. That's true. That's true. But, there, I mean, it's not the richest sport. You're 100% right. So, I don't there's know what no he's way. talking about there. The second thing is, yeah. and actually this should have been the first thing... You're worried about you getting paid? What about that minimum wage worker that, you know, only gets paid by the hour or or someone who who's on unemployment? Like what what are you worried about getting paid? You have been in the majors for 6 or 7 years. You've been getting paid millions of dollars. If you haven't saved up enough money to last you through this crisis, then there's a problem. You should not be worried about getting paid and you shouldn't even be saying this out loud. No. I mean, it's it's okay for him to wonder if he's going to get paid. Like, he wants to get paid like anybody else. It's okay for him to wonder that. Mm-hmm. But for him to say it out loud is just incredibly stupid. And it's incredibly, like, it's indicative of, like, um, the psyche of a pro athlete. The Most of these guys have been pampered since they're 12 years old. They've all been groomed to be the, the best guy on their little league team, then the best guy on their junior college team, and the best guy on their college team, and the best guy on their team in the minors. They've been pampered every step of the way. So he only knows one way, which is, like, what about me? That's 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 what they know about. What about me? But it is it is ridiculous. It is that is ridiculous. And and why wouldn't he get paid? Aren't all the contracts in baseball guaranteed, anyways? I don't know. I, I don't know how it's going to work because, <laughs> like, is this season even going to count? Let's say the season doesn't get played at all. Do they just go to next season? Yeah. And if you had five years left on your deal, you still have five years left on your deal. I I don't know. I guess that 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 type of decision would have to be approved by the union, right? I know there's I know there's a, a lot of question right now about because of such an important thing in baseball is the service time, the mm-hmm. days of service time, and that's going to come into play at a certain point as the season gets pushed back more and more and like you said potentially canceled altogether, right? Mm-hmm. I have, I have or few... maybe they start the season July 1st. I don't know. I, I, don't know. I don't know. And play the World Series in December? No, maybe they do half a season. I don't know. Um. Yeah, like 1981. Yeah? Well, 1981 was two halves, but this yeah. would be like just half, one half. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So um, speaking of 1981, which I sneakily brought up there. Um, mm-hmm. I'm sure you've been watching the MLB network because, well, what else is there to watch? And they've been showing some old MLB games. network has been my salvation. MLB network has been my salvation for the, like the last week because they're showing like, well, now they're on this thing of 25, 25 greatest games in the last 50 years. So mm-hmm. every day they're highlighting a different game. Um, and then there's all these MLB, I told you, like. We, we talked offline. There's all these MLB specials, the 1979 season, the 1980 season, the 1981 season, like, you know, like, and those are primetime Expos years, right? That happens to be the ones that they've shown. So it's, it's always quite interesting. So you mentioned the 1981 season. I watched that episode a few days ago. Um, and yeah. keep in mind, I was, you know, yes, I was following baseball, but I was 10 years old. So I didn't know a lot about baseball back then. And in watching that episode, I didn't realize that when they when they ended the strike and they came back to play, I didn't even realize that the first game back was the All Star game. I had no clue. I completely forgot that. When I saw that on the show, I was like, "What?" I didn't remember about it either. I didn't r- recall at all. But like you said, we were much younger. We were kids still, you know. So yeah, yeah. The, yeah. the other the other thing when they when they recapped the 1980 season. Um, so I didn't see that entire episode, but the end of each episode, they tell you who won rookie of the year and Cy Young in both leagues yeah. and everything. Yeah. And so they had a note on the screen in the 1980 season, the Oakland A's, the whole pitching staff combined had yeah. 94 yeah. complete games. That was unbelievable. 94. Co- you only play 162 and they had 94 complete games. If you, if you, <laughs> I don't, you'd have to go back. The last, I don't know, at least five seasons, maybe 10 seasons, and accumulate every single complete game in Major League Baseball, you'd have to go back at least five or 10 years to accumulate 94 complete games. Yeah, it was in the late 80s or early 90s that basically complete games started to go away, basically. 
and the idea of pitch count started to come through and yeah the, the, the complete games just don't happen anymore like you just even the even the best pitchers don't get many complete games a year right i mean for one team to have 94 was insane <sighs> that's nuts right it means every game the manager is like okay who's starting tonight who do we got okay vita blue you're starting okay that's it like there's like the, the guys in the bullpen don't even have to warm up you know and it's like I told you, I mean, in the American League, you don't have to pinch shit for your pitcher. So right. that's never even a right. question. Just, and maybe, yeah, never even a question. So I, I do like everything that the um, Major League Baseball is is showing. And I don't know if you want to segue into March Madness, which is not happening, but. College basketball. Well, I'm missing March Madness. This week. This weekend would have been the first weekend, which is one of the great sports weekends of the year. And when I say weekend, I'm including Thursday, Friday. <laughs> And Saturday and Sunday, because certainly Thursday, I would have been working in front of the TV, watching all the games, checking my brackets. Same thing with Friday and all day today and all day tomorrow. Um, I mean, there's a void without sports in our lives. We know that there's definitely a void. Like we've said, there's nothing to watch on TV (laughs) without sports right now. And the tournament is it's like it's really irrationally important to us. Like it's, it's, it, it has this extra importance that you can't really say why it just does. And then you texted me yesterday and I was so happy to see what you texted me and that CBS is actually showing three games today and they're sh- and then the afternoon and then again, tomorrow, three games. So today on CBS, you can watch North Carolina versus Georgetown. That's from the, the 1982 championship game. That's like the Michael Jordan game. You know, you've seen the highlights of that. And then following that, they have uh, North Carolina State over Houston. Uh, I don't. I shouldn't give you spoilers about who won in case you don't know. But <laughs> North Carolina versus Houston, which is the 83 championship game. And then they're showing the 92 Duke-Kentucky regional final. Not even the championship game, the Elite Eight game, right? Which is, you know, everybody knows everybody knows that as basically the Christian Leitner game. And then tomorrow they've got some other ones, which are more recent history. They've got the Villanova, one of the Villanova championship games. They've got Virginia and I forget who else. But more recent, more recent stuff. Oh, Memphis. Memphis. Versus Which Kansas. is from the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so uh, the, the, good for CBS, and I hope they keep showing more next week, right? Yeah, I mean, listen, they they had already earmarked those time slots for basketball, so what else are they going to put on? I mean, they could put on, you know, a Three's Company rerun or a Seinfeld rerun, but uh, this is better if you ask me. Sein- so. <laughs> Seinfeld reruns are on all the time on multiple channels. We don't need an extra network tell- giving us that. No, we, we don't. We have plenty of that. Yeah, we have plenty of that. So a couple things. You mentioned the Virginia game last year. And so when I was looking at the guide, I saw that that game is on tomorrow. And and when I saw, I you know, obviously I know that Virginia won the, the championship last year. I completely forgot who they played against. If you had asked me without me looking at the guide, I would not have been able to tell you who they beat. Because actually their game, their previous game, the final four game where they defeated Auburn was a very yeah. memorable, exciting game. The championship game was not memorable at all last year. No, I agree. I looked at the guide. I was like, Texas Tech Red Raiders? Question mark? <laughs> and <laughs> in my mind. And it just goes to show you, because I've been telling you this for years and years. Like, there's so many great teams in every sport. I'm not just talking about college basketball. There's great teams in every sport that you just don't remember because they didn't win the championship, right? Right. And it's like we used to listen to the podcast. Our, our One of the first podcasts that we really ever listened to was the Fantasy Baseball podcast. Um, I forget what it was actually called. MLB 411? MLB 411. And they used to have their saying, flags fly forever, right? And it's never been more true. When you win the championship, everybody remembers you. And the guy who came in second, he, you just don't remember it. Like, in, you just don't. Now, another thing, so you mentioned that today you get to see the Duke-Kentucky game from 1992, I believe it was. I, I'm going to tell you a story about that game. I recorded that game on my VHS um, back in the day because yeah. because I was actually, I had to work. Like, I was at work. I had a part-time uh-huh. job at the Raymond Bork Arena in St. Laurent, and I had to work. It was a Saturday night, and so I knew I was going to miss the game, so I recorded the game. 
And I only went home, like, I don't know, I got home like 11 or 12 o'clock at night and started watching. And because there were no smartphones back then, and because I didn't speak to you on the phone, I had no clue what happened in the game. I didn't know who won. I didn't know anything about it. So as I'm watching it, and, you know, I'm watching from like midnight until two in the morning, I'm I'm obviously, you know, freaking out because I don't know what happened. And then I'm just worried the whole time that I've recorded enough time so I get to see the end of the game because it did go mm-hmm. longer than most people thought. And I actually did record enough and I did get the end of the game. And so I have the entire game on a VHS tape somewhere at my dad's place. Now you can get it on your PVR right now if you just record it today on cbs but i wonder if they're going to cut parts out to shorten it to two hours i hope they not. will the, the, i think they will like well they can they can they, first of all they can manipulate the commercials uh they can manipulate the halftime we don't need a 15 minute halftime we just need one commercial right right well but they they want to they <laughs> right. ha- they've one commercial sold break. commercial spots so they have to show the commercials yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, they're gonna fit it in. Obviously, they're gonna they're gonna figure out a way, or or maybe they're just gonna cut out some dead time, you know, like uh, substitutions happening, guys coming on the court, uh, times in between free throws. Like who knows? Who knows? What well, I'm gonna we're gonna find out. We're gonna watch it. We're gonna find yeah, out. Right? Exactly. I mean, I could still remember vividly where I was when that shot went in, when that where I watched that game. I, I still could remember it today, and like it's still a miracle that they won. Where were you <laughs> every time? I was at my house, my parents' house in in dollar days or mo okay um and i was dating um diane my my wife now but we were just dating then this is 92 so we were dating for about a year at this point and um i just remember like i was supposed to pick her up at a certain time and and it was planned out i was like the game's gonna end at this time and then i'll be ready to go and i'll come pick her up and we'll go out for dinner and then i called her i'm like i'm gonna be late I, this game's going overtime. I'm going to be late. And she was not happy, you know, like, like, cause we had plans with other people. I forget what the story was, but it was like, I cannot leave till this game's over. I'm going to be late. And then, you know, um, Kentucky hit a shot with 2.1 seconds left to go ahead by one. Right. And there's 2.1 seconds left and the game, they do calls timeout. And I'm, my dad's watching with me. Now, my dad didn't know anything about college basketball, nothing. Right. He was a sports fan. He knew about baseball. He could watch football semi-intelligently and he knew about hockey like all Canadian people do. But he he didn't know anything about college basketball at all. All he knew was that I loved Duke, right? Duke was my team. And here they are with 2.1 seconds left trailing by one. And he looks at me and he's like, Avi, it's just not going to be your year. You know, he goes, it's too bad. It's just not going to be your year. And then we know what happens, right? For those who don't know and never met your dad, your dad reminds me a lot of the former Princeton coach, Pete Carrill. Oh, yeah. They had the same look, right? Exactly. Absolutely. The same thing. Yeah. All right. Are we going to... You have more or do you want to end? TV? I do want to talk about television. There's two television shows I want to talk about. One we've talked about every week. It's uh, Zoe's Extraordinary Playlist. So I, I haven't missed an episode and I have to say that Actually, the episodes seem to be getting better. You know, usually when you when you watch a new show, the, oftentimes the first episode is the best one, and then it sort of starts to wane off and whatever. The novelty yeah. wears off. But I have to say that this show, I find that the episodes have been getting better as they've been going along. And the other thing is, these shows are actually educational for me because... I am learning lyrics to songs, songs that I've known forever, but I never knew the lyrics to these songs. And now I actually know the lyrics. It's quite interesting. Right. It's like when you you have a pop song or a rock song and it's suddenly sort of sang, I don't want to say like show tune style, but more Broadway style because that's, there's a performer singing it, a person, you know, like um, you do hear all the words perfectly clear, right? Yeah. And and I've never heard them before. Like which song? I would walk 500 miles. No, not that one. But uh, from last episode, um, I think it just give me a reason. I don't even know yeah, sure. what the name of the yeah, song yeah. is. Yeah, okay. I-, I did like the episode last week and I do agree with you. It's getting better. It's getting better because you're starting to know the characters more. And-, and I think that's part of it, right? So, The other show I want to talk about that I just started watching this week is yeah. Better Call Saul. I don't think you've seen it yet or started watching it, correct? I haven't watched any of it. 
So I'm not going to give away any spoilers or anything, but I am going to say that there are a lot of characters in Better Call Saul that you will recognize from from Breaking Bad. Right. Well, that's why people like it. And that's what I, I was trying to tell you, that people that have watched Better Call Saul that are up to date told me it gets better and better like because it gets closer and closer to the the timeline of Breaking Bad, you know, like, so you, you have this anticipation because you kind of know, like, what's going to happen in an, another storyline, you know, so to speak. I, I think eventually I'll watch it. But I mean, well, I mean, we're in a situation with this lockdown quarantine. I'm going to eventually watch everything. You know, have you seen that show? Have you seen that commercial where they're like, I don't even know what the commercial's for. It's like, you've reached the end of the internet. Like, I feel like I'm almost there. Yeah. <laughs> but with Better Call Saul, um, you don't even have to wait till, you know, the last season, which obviously I'm, I've only watched season one. In season one, and I think even in episode one of season one, you see at least, well, of course, it's Bob Odenkirk, but besides yeah. him, there's another character, and I'm not going to give it away, that you that you will definitely recognize. Um, mm. So it starts okay. right from, from episode one. And the other thing about um, about Better Call Saul that I really like in fact, I think I like it more than uh, than Breaking Bad. Um, there are at least two times in season one, at least two times where I actually jumped literally out of my couch because I was so scared about something that was going to happen or something that did happen. I'm going to watch. I, eventually, I'll watch. Eventually, I'll watch. Just wait, I till, did, so, just wait till I'm done. Go ahead. Okay, okay. So the show that I've been watching this last two weeks um, is also a Netflix show called Mindhunter. I don't know if you've seen it pop up on your recommended shows when you go on Netflix and stuff. So it's really, really a good show. It's one of the better shows I've seen in a while. And season one is good and season two is really good, even better. And it's like, uh, I would highly recommend it. It's it's basically, it's, it's a fictionalized account of a, a kind of nonfiction book about how the FBI created this behavioral behavioral science unit. You know, basically we take for granted that like these there's these profilers in the FBI that will look into crime and say, we're looking for a male 25, 35, this, this. Like they they can kind of create the profile of the who they're of the suspect before they even know anything. And this is how this that whole unit was created, basically. So it's it's quite fascinating. Before we sign off, remember, you can listen and subscribe to new and archived episodes of the Skip and Josh podcast wherever you listen to podcasts, including Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, iHeartRadio, and of course, Spotify. If you listen to the show through Apple Podcasts, please leave us a review. We would love to hear from you via email, skipandjoshshow at gmail.com, via Twitter at Skip and Josh, or by liking and following our Facebook page. As always, you can get all the links to everything I just talked about on our website, skipandjosh.com. We leave you with this. Do you, I mean, we already talked about TV, but uh, do you have anything that you, else that you have in your notes that you wanted to mention this week? I mean, I can definitely give you my Survivor update. It was quite a quite a, an amazing episode of Survivor with two hugely popular players getting kicked off. Two in the same episode. Two? I thought you can only kick off one at a time. It was, uh, they, they, you know, they make twists. There was like a double, double style eviction. And, uh, <laughs> okay. So finish and, your update. Well, that's what happened. Two power players went off and, <laughs> and pretty much the main reason why I was watching the show, the only character that I was really rooting for was kicked off. And uh, it's disappointing. Who were you rooting for? Her name is Parvati. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, my wife will tell you that I basically had a mad crush on her since she was on the first time. <laughs> Is your wife and okay with that? I don't think so. <laughs> I think of all I think of all the celebrity crushes that you could have, I think she's a little bit uncomfortable about how much I do like Parvati. Well, it's not like I you're ever really, going really... to meet her, so I don't think your wife needs to worry. No. So I was disappointed. Although there's still a chance she could come back because it's there's one player that's going to come back from all the first batch that were kicked off. Hopefully it'll be her. Okay. Um, the only thing I wanted to mention was something that really only matters to you and I. Um, mm -hmm. So this week, Tony Kornheiser did one episode of his daily podcast. 
but he did it. It was a fiasco. Right. Well, it he, was a fiasco. He did it yeah. from his home on the phone, yeah. and the sound quality was not good at all, in my opinion. Yeah. And it's just, it's just nice to see that even though we are very small time and we have absolutely no budget whatsoever, that at yeah. least the sound quality of our show is fantastic. And that's all thanks to you. Every time I hear these po- other podcasts, or especially what's going on now, like you said, with all these Skype, Google Hangouts, Zoom calls and everything, I'm like, do these guys not know what to do? Like, I don't understand. How come it's like that? You know, we we figured out the recipe for getting the sound quality for a two-person show pretty well from the beginning, you know? And, yeah, I, I don't quite get that. Anyways. All right, so... I hope you have notes left over for next week because I don't know if the NFL is going to be giving us news. I, I think I'll be able to manage something. Who knows? We'll see. We'll, we'll figure something out. All right. Great talking to you. Stay safe this week. And like uh, we'll reconvene next week and see where we're at with all this stuff. Okay. Same to you. Okay.